You know, when I hear the words of that song, I am guided toward every spiritual principle and truth that's ever been spoken throughout human history. We had the pleasure and honor of being with 550 souls in Phoenix last weekend for an amazing conference. And everything that happened over the course of that weekend was nothing more than an act born of love, an expression born of love. Every single person there, whether they be a vendor or a participant or a speaker, was moved to tears profoundly by the love that was presenced in that space. And I know that in being the conduit or the container for this energy, that all the lives that were present there will never be the same again. This week has been a week of resting for me. It's been a week of just absolutely chilling out. I have uh, no clue what's going on with the hurricane. I haven't been watching the news. Uh, I have really, really, really just wanted to just rest. After last weekend, I felt like a rag that had been completely wrung out. Just completely wrung out. You know, they have that saying where it's like, God, use me. You know, well, I felt like God used the totality of who I was to such a degree that there was just, just enough left. Just enough left. But I'll tell you, in that moment, if I had been wrung out completely to the point where there were nothing left, that would be perfectly fine with me. In the week that I've been home, I've had the pleasure of watching the movie Aladdin. How many of you have seen the movie? Raise your hands. Yeah. And I was a bit skeptical because, honestly, I preferred the cartoon version of Aladdin and it was very hard for this theatrical production with Will Smith. I mean, let's face it, Robin Williams is the genie. Okay? So I was a bit skeptical. But I actually happened to watch it twice as I was enjoying my time with my family after having been on the road for so long. And I thought, what an appropriate moment for this film to arrive in my life. And what I love the most about this movie was that here we have Aladdin with this lamp, has the capacity to wish for anything in the world for himself to make himself more powerful, to make himself better, to make himself greater than any other human being in human history. All of these things that we wish for on an egoic level, all the while forgetting that that is not why we are here. And in a moment of revelation, in a moment of remembrance, he wishes to set the genie free. He wishes to set the genie free. Now just think about that in the context of your life. And be honest about your insanity. How many of you, in the presence of a lamp that had the capacity to grant you any wish, would even consider for one moment setting that genie who's been stuck in that lamp for thousands of years free? Be honest. Be honest. Because most of us, in the presence of that power and that potential and that ability to bring something into this world, for the benefit of ourselves, something that we've been praying for, something that we've been wanting, something that we've been desiring, would immediately default to the setting of, I have been wanting this my whole life and now I have the capacity to have it, but it would take somebody very special in the presence of that potential to say, I release you, genie. And in the context of this talk, I found it fascinating because we pray for so many things in life. How many of you have begun to realize that you've been praying for all of the wrong things? Raise your hands. <laughs> Please bring me, so we're just, we're praying, right? So we're rubbing the lamp, okay? So we're rubbing the lamp. Just rub your lamp. Let's see how good you are. You're very good at it. <laughs> rub your lamp. Let me see your lamp rubbing. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> very good. Some of you are like petting a gerbil. <clears throat> <clears throat> we rub this lamp. We pray. Please bring me an amazing daughter-in-law. <clears throat> and then we rub the lamp some more. Please bring me abundance and money. And then we rub the lamp some more. And then we rub it some more, and then we rub it some more, and then we rub it some more. And the only thing that happens is that all of these things that we receive don't in one singular way benefit the totality of who we are because you see, God's trying to teach us in every moment that everything is unfolding in alignment with God's will for our life, yes? So at that point, 
if we were to demonstrate the same wisdom as Aladdin and to have the courage to trust and surrender to such a degree that we were willing to let go of our desires, willing to let go of our ambitions, willing to let go of our hopes, willing to let go of everything that we believe we need on a personal level, if we were willing to unleash that potential and set it free, realizing that all we needed to be was ourselves, our God-given selves, then in that moment we would realize every single line of every single lyric of that song that was sung before I came on this stage. At some point, we have to stop praying to improve our circumstance or to overcome something or to become some better version of us and we have to stand in the presence of the greatest truth and prayer of all and just have the courage to say, thank you. Thank you. And here's why. Because this is how we align our individual will with the will of the divine. And that is the demonstration of being spiritual. That is the demonstration and the application of every teaching that has been shared since the beginning of time. To trust and surrender is the highest way of saying thank you. To let go is the highest way of saying thank you. To let go. Because living in Naples, we're very fortunate. We don't want for things here. We don't operate, for the most part, from a place of need. We have been blessed with every material manifestation that we could ever want. We have food, we have shelter, we have company, we have companionship. We have all of the things that are required to find a sense of belonging on this earth. So at that point, all that's left for us to do is to truly enjoy the experience of being human, to stand in the truth of the authenticity that we are and to live from that place. Are you following me? Good. So how do we demonstrate the same courage that Aladdin demonstrated in setting that genie free? It's time to give God a vacation. How many of you were willing to let Set God free. How many of you are willing to set God free? When I first met Jan, Jan had her rosary. She didn't need me for anything. And this woman would pray her rosary 24 hours a day. And eventually I got to the point where I said, Jan, could you please put the phone down and give God a break? (laughs) Do you think that there are other people in this world that may potentially need something as well? You're monopolizing the connection. Could you please put the rosary down, step away from the rosary? (laughs) And much to my surprise, she agreed. You know, in all truth and all honesty, I could never pray for the life that I have. You know, I feel like Aladdin in so many ways. You know, we all feel like that. We all feel like someone who doesn't fit in, somebody who doesn't belong, somebody who struggled, somebody's had to do whatever they've had to do in order to survive. And for many of you, this was life before Naples, yes? (laughs) Do you remember life before Naples? Do you remember before you lived in this beautiful bubble of energy where there are golf courses and plentiful supply? Where there's a beautiful sunset every night where we have everything that we could potentially want. We have farmer's markets. We have everything here. You could get every kind of juice and smoothie you could ever want in the course of your life. (laughs) And now, as if it wasn't enough that Naples was this pristine part of the world, it's also now a blue zone, which means you'll get to live longer. Yes, exactly. You can clap for that. I blame you entirely. That is specifically down to your wheatgrass consumption. Do you get this? Okay, good. So we live in this pristine reality. We live in this palace, in this kingdom, in this greater blessing and miracle that is this life. What is it truly that we have to pray for in the context of the fact that every blessing that we have ever wanted that we could never even know to ask for is being given to us in every moment? When my daughter Celeste was going through her heart issue, meaning that she had a heart transplant at the age of 18 months, was born into the hospital and stayed in the hospital subsequently until she received that heart transplant. Every single person in my life, through their willingness to be of service, decided to start praying for Celeste. And I was so grateful. However, the prayers and the blessings and the miracles that were being shone forth from all over the world 
weren't able to help me find peace in my own heart around what was unfolding. You know, at some point, I fell to my knees in the chapel in the hospital and I had to do exactly what Aladdin did. I had to rub that lamp and give my child to God. I had to stop wishing that she continued to live. I had to stop desiring it. I had to stop intending it. I had to stop wanting that. And as a parent, that is the hardest thing of all. I had to hand this child over to God and say, she's yours. The outcome of this is yours. The outcome of this is you. This is for you to take care of. Well, just imagine if we cultivated the courage to do that with everything in our lives. How do you think your life would work out? I'm happy to say that four years later, she's a pistol. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> and that she has fundamentally helped us as a family overcome every heart defect that we had. Because you see, prior to having Celeste, we were praying for all of the wrong things. Prior to having Celeste, we were living for things that didn't mean anything. Things that didn't bring a moment of happiness. Things that we had been taught that we should be asking for. Things that we had been conditioned to believe meant something or that had some significance or some importance that nothing really in truth mattered. It just didn't matter. In that moment, her making it was enough. And from that moment forth, Jan and I have had to surrender. We've had to let go. And in that surrendering, there have been so many blessings and so many miracles that have unfolded without our even needing to ask. Do you get this? So what is it that you need to hand over to God? Who is it that you need to hand over to God? How many of you today are going to have the courage to rub that lamp and set that genie free? Let yourself off the hook. Surrender to the outcome and the potential of what is possible instead of the human definition of what it is that we believe that we need in order to start trusting and believing. How about we surrender and how about we let go and then the evidence will come, yes? How many of you would like that? Okay, close your eyes. Just close your eyes and take some breaths. When you stop praying for you, wanting things for you, asking for things for you, when you stop second-guessing the perfection of your reality, all of a sudden you live in harmony with life itself and everything that you require is brought to you. And I'm talking about everything because by virtue of the fact that you're human, your heart will break. You'll get frustrated. You'll feel fear, you'll experience insecurity, you'll experience everything that there is to experience as a part of being human because that is the blessing and gift of life, yes? So these things don't need to be prayed away, they don't need to be avoided. They need to be embraced because there is nothing that you can do that can't be done. There's nothing that you can say that you're not meant to say. It's easy. All you need is love. Take some breaths and just relax and just close your eyes. I just want to be with you in stillness for a few moments. Who or what is it that you want, you have to give to God? Who is it? Maybe it's a son who has a drug addiction. Maybe it's a husband who is just angry and frustrated and irritated all the time. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe you just finally have to give your finances to God and say, you know what, please, I give this to you. Or maybe you'll display the same courage and wisdom that Aladdin displayed in rubbing that lamp and just giving everything to God. Because everything is God. And if everything is God, then everything is love. And then we must cultivate the ability to perceive it and receive it as the love that it is. If Jesus died for all of our sins, then why are we suffering? 
If every great being came to this earth to bring a level of illumination and enlightenment, then why are we struggling? Why are we denying ourselves that which is innately ours? At some point, we have to have the courage to recognize that our path has been cleared. And that even though it may not always feel good, even though it may not be what we want it to be, it is exactly the way that it needs to be. And in that moment, that's exactly when we have to say thank you. So who is it today that you are going to hand over to God? Who is it? Maybe yourself. Maybe the person that you need to hand over is you. Just finally have to have the courage to say, you know what? I'm done doing it my way. I'm done controlling. I'm done manipulating. I'm done competing. I'm done asking for all of these things that I've been brainwashed into believing I'm supposed to ask for in order to be happy. How about I just start from this moment living your version of my life? It takes courage. How many of you today in the presence of the infinite will demonstrate the courage to surrender your life and all of the many details and facets of your life to God. Raise your hands. How many of you today will have the courage to do that? You are willing to let go. You are willing to let go. You are willing to let go and let God. Take a deep breath. Whoosh, let it out. Take another deep breath. Let it out. Let it out. All you need is love. One more. Inhale. Let it out. Love is all there is. God is all there is. That's all this thing is about. There is nothing else. There is nothing else. There is only God. There is only love. You may take some breaths and bring your awareness back to the room. How am I doing on time? Good, excellent. Bring your awareness back. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> we have to understand that we're dealing with the limitation of the mind. We're asking for what we've been told we're meant to be asking for. We're praying for what we believe we should be praying for. But we're operating from the limited confines of our mind. At some point we have to cultivate the courage to begin to live from the infinite expansiveness that is our heart. And that means developing a love that is so all-inclusive that we welcome every experience as if we were welcoming God. It's not quite season yet, so you've got some time to practice. <laughs> you've got some time to practice. Because everyone's going to start gradually coming back, right? So you've got some time, okay, to practice. Because guess what? There's going to be just a little bit more traffic every day. Okay? And in those moments, it might not be the way you want it to be. It might not be the way that you would like it to be. You may want to remind people that you are not on their vacation. <laughs> but in the midst of that experience, all I'm asking you to do is just please take a breath and remember that your life is not about you. Your life is not about about you. You see, the reason why so many of you are so confused in this room is because you forgot which package you signed up for before you were born. Every single one of you, when you were signing up to come down to this reality, checked the liberation box. That's the box that you checked. And what does that mean? That means that everything inside of you that has to come up, that has to be evoked, that has to be impacted, that has to be brought into the light of your conscious awareness is going to come up. And that also means that every single person that facilitates that role is an angel driving at 10 miles an hour in front of you in that car. And we haven't even legalized marijuana yet. Just imagine what happens. <laughs> you 
know, they're worried about the police trying to be able to identify people that are under the influence of marijuana. Well, it's the person doing five miles an hour in a 25 <laughs> mile an hour zone. <laughs> Start there, because that's the person eating Pringles <laughs> and all kinds of chocolates and gummy bears at the same time. <laughs> so, I want you to know that you can't mess your life up. You can't mess, I've tried. <laughs> I really have. I, you know, really, the, the, the saddest thing that I have to live with is at some point in my life, I really believed that I was somebody. I, I thought I was doing something, I thought I mattered. Uh, you know, I, I, I so wanted to fit in and be approved of and be loved that I, I actually thought that I was the one that was actually doing something and there was so much suffering and so much misery in that that eventually I had to lay that inauthenticity and that lie down and realize that, you know what, in every moment we're not actually doing anything. Everything is spontaneously and automatically just unfolding and the more we have the courage to be vulnerable, the more we have the courage to trust, the more we have the courage to let go, the more we are aligning with God's will. I love you with all of my heart and I want you, please, as much as possible to rub that lamp and ask for nothing. Rub that lamp and pray for nothing. Understand that even before you can ask, it's already been handled. <laughs> that you are dealing with an infinite intelligence that love you and that everything that is unfolding is love itself. So I want to thank you all with all of my heart for loving me through every single phase of being Panache Desai. That's the blessing of community. That's the joy of experience. That's the gift of love that regardless of what's happening in someone's life and regardless of how they're showing up, they're met with love and compassion and empathy because you know what? We're all at the end of the day doing exactly what we're meant to be doing to fulfill that promise that we checked off at the beginning of this whole thing, which is liberation. I love you with all of my heart. Thank you, Naples. Be well.